it is my opinion that you do not really understand the concept of banking. All the banks are broke. Uh, Bank Santander, Deutsche Bank, Royal Bank of Scotland, they're all broke. And why are they broke? It isn't an act of God. It isn't some sort of tsunami. They're broke because we have a system called fractional reserve banking, which means that banks can lend money that they don't actually have. It's a criminal scandal, and it's been going on for too long. To add to that problem, you have moral hazard, a very significant moral hazard from the political sphere. And most of the problem starts in politics and central banks, which are part of the same political system. We have counterfeiting, sometimes called quantitative easing, but counterfeiting by any other name. The artificial printing of money, which if any ordinary person did, they'd go to prison for a very long time. And yet governments and central banks do it all the time. Central banks repress the amount of interest that rate, rates are, so we don't have the real cost of money. And yet we blame the real retail banks for manipulating LIBOR. The sheer effrontery of this is quite astonishing. It's central banks. It's central banks that manipulate interest rates, Commissioner. And plus, underneath all this, we talk loosely, in a rather cavalier fashion, do we not, about deposit guarantees. So when banks go broke through their own incompetence and chicanery, the taxpayer picks up the tab. It's theft from the taxpayer. And until we start sending bankers, and I include central bankers and politicians, to prison for this outrage, it will continue. So what is a central bank? A central bank is an institution that produces the currency of an entire nation. Based on historical precedent, two specific powers are inherent in central banking practice. The control of interest rates and the control of the money supply or inflation. The central bank does not simply supply a government's economy with money, it loans it to them at interest. Then, through the use of increasing and decreasing the supply of money, the central bank regulates the value of the currency being issued. It is critical to understand that the entire structure of this system can only produce one thing in the long run. Debt. It doesn't take a lot of ingenuity to figure this scam out. For every single dollar produced by the central bank is loaned at interest. That means every single dollar produced is actually the dollar plus a certain percent of debt based on that dollar. And since the central bank has the monopoly over the production of the currency for the entire country, and they loan each dollar out with immediate debt attached to it, where does the money to pay for the debt come from? It can only come from the central bank again which means the central bank has to perpetually increase its money supply temporarily cover the outstanding debt created which in turn since that new money is loaned out at interest as well creates even more debt the end result of this system without fail is slavery for it is impossible for the government and thus the public to ever come out of the self-generating debt now the control of the economy and the perpetual robbery of wealth is only one side of the Rubik's Cube the bankers hold in their hands. The next tool for profit and control is war. It's important to understand that the most lucrative thing that can happen for the international bankers is war, for it forces the country to borrow even more money from the Federal Reserve Bank at interest, at interest, at interest. Today, I'm proud to say that under the UK's presidency, the group of the world's seven most advanced economies, the G7, is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote that could be used alongside physical notes and coins. The Central Bank Digital Currency Anti-Surveillance State Act, which puts a check on unelected bureaucrats and ensures that the United States digital currency policy upholds our values of privacy, individual sovereignty, and free market competitiveness. Recent actions from the Biden administration have made it clear that they are not only itching to create a digital dollar, but they're willing to trade Americans' right to financial privacy for a surveillance-style CBDC. A CBDC is nothing more than a CCP-style surveillance tool that can be weaponized to oppress the American way of life. 
We're not going to let that happen, not on House Republicans' watch. And I want to thank the Financial Services Committee for considering our bill this month, and we're going to continue working to ensure that the digital economy is designed by Americans and emulates American values. And I return it to... Unlike most of the digital money people use daily today, it would be issued directly by a central bank, like the Bank of England in the UK. And governments and central banks across the world are working together, looking into what having a digital currency might mean in practice. This includes issues that people care about, such as ensuring users' money would be safe and secure, that it could work with other ways to pay, would be energy efficient and available to everyone. A potential CBDC could offer businesses and consumers new ways to pay in the future. It's all part of the wider story of digital innovation that has delivered benefits to millions around the world and in the UK. The United Nations, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and partners of the Rockefeller Foundation are launching a campaign to accelerate digital ID, digital payments, and data sharing rollouts in 50 countries under the umbrella of digital public infrastructure. Is being championed by the globalist WEF and unsurprisingly is backed by Bill Gates along with the UN. If successful, DPI will give governments and corporations the power to implement systems of social credit that can determine where and how you can travel, what you are allowed to consume, and how you will be able to transact with your programmable money. The decision on whether to launch a central bank digital currency is for each country to make and no G7 jurisdiction has yet made that choice. When the government decides that units of central bank money can be used to purchase some things, but not other things that it deems less desirable. These decisions raise important questions about the reshaping of our <laughs> financial systems and the way in which people interact with money and payments. That's why working together... I will never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency. We're excited to be taking a leading role with G7 members in publishing this exploratory work, bringing money and finance I will never allow into the, the creation century. of a central bank digital currency.